All right, hey everyone, welcome back. Um, this is, uh, we're gonna be doing uh, the Cosmic EQ pads with uh, Crossbones Boss. This is actually last month's EQ. I'm finally getting around to uh, uploading this, uh, but it's long, so, and I wanna comment, commentate over it. Um, so I just, you know, had to make the time. Um, I do have coffee, so forgive me for a little bit of slurping while I finish this. Um, so yeah, um, uh, wanted to focus on Odin for these pads. Um, I got Surfer down pat, love using him. I bring Odin pretty much anywhere I use Surfer now. So I want to get more familiar with, uh, Odin, his, uh, moveset, his spacing, his timing, all of that. So, um, sure. There's better cosmic champs. They can do probably most of these fights quicker. Um, but uh, don't really care. Wanted, wanted to use Odin, he's a lot of fun. And uh, you know, that's where I'm at. Um, and then also Rogue and uh, a synergy or two around her for uh, the Crossbones boss. Kind of seems like Kabam wants you to use Rogue for him because she's such a great counter for this uh, boss uh, with her buff steel and power, uh, power steel. Power Drain, Power Steel on her level two. Um, but I did bring Hyperion too for at least one of these fights, maybe two, because I think there was a big abomination on one of these pads and Odin just wasn't gonna cut it. Um, so I do, I did bring Hype. Uh, I have him at rank three, but he's unduped, so his buffs don't last very long. But uh, yeah, we'll go over, you know, I think I had two separate synergy teams in this one which is pretty good. You know, I didn't really mix it up too much. I think in the skill EQ um, pads, I, I mean, I think I ran five different teams of synergies. Um, but yeah, we're about to get into it here. And uh, let's see, did uh, Rogue, White Magneto, and Longshot, because I really do like his synergy for Rogue. You can see it there. Uh, and then white mags for the passive parry, you know, that's always helpful, especially against crossbones since he likes to purify. Um, and this is the other, other team I brought at least once, I think. Yeah. Power gain for rogue and for Odin as well. He doesn't need it cause he gets that energize, uh, energize buff on his heavy. I think I maybe used that team for like one path and then I, I think I might've switched to like the, uh, the white mags. Um, wow, I brought three synergy teams? I didn't realize. Yeah, this one was kind of useless. Yeah, I dropped this one after the first run because uh, I think I mentioned this in another video. They, Kabam put like no mutants on any of these pads and I think it's because they knew um, that it only takes one fight with Apocalypse to you know ramp to max genetic code because that's what I was, that was the theory here. So I could, uh, you know, horse the rogue for the boss, but there was no mutants anywhere. And I didn't want to bring Cable and APOC just for rogue, because then I had to leave out, you know, White Magneto or um, Longshot. Leaving out Longshot's fine if you can horse and rogue, but uh, you know, you still have to bring Cable. But yeah, this one I brought Mephisto for that uh, synergy for Odin. I think he gets like, plus 20, 20 attack, uh, if everyone's still alive. Um, but yeah, anywho, so, this first fight, Icarus, uh, yep, still pretty unfamiliar with this guy. I think uh, he gains power on like light attacks or something to that effect. Uh, or maybe it's like he doesn't gain power from light attacks, but gains additional power from everything else. I'm not exactly sure, I haven't really bothered to look, to tell you the truth. I don't think I've even faced him once in war yet. Um, but uh, yeah, and you know, if I had pulled him, you know, I definitely would have familiarized myself with him uh, straight away, but I didn't pull him from the featured. And I've kind of since stopped pulling the featured, you know? I'm not even doing the uh, 13K sigil uh, features because I got what I need from that feature, you know? I got, I mean, yeah, there is some more stuff I want, Mainly, I'd, I'd like a Hyperion dude, uh, but I mean, I pulled the champ, so I mean, I can't complain, you know. 
Yeah, this is kind of... <laughs> I just get kind of beat up in this fight. I haven't even really seen his moves, I, I, I think, except in, like, the uh, EQ that he was in last month or whatever, the month before. So, yeah, I'm just basically taking stuff in stride here, getting bombarded by uh, his incinerates from his level 1 or whatever. Um... But yeah, from what I gather here, Odin's rotation is you want to basically uh, knock down twice to stack max uh, spears, <laughs> tridents or whatever they are. And then once you get to that, if you knock them down a third time, uh, then you get that energize buff. Um, stacking energize. And then... After that, um, you want to try to fire the level 1 with two uh, Trident buffs as well, because then you get um, True Strike along with uh, his Block Proficiency? That's what it is. It's a Block prof Proficiency buff. But you get both of those. If you if you only have, if, if you have less than two Odin Trident buffs, um, you get uh, just the True Strike on the level 1. Um, but yeah, so I think he was like probably the hardest fight on this path, or at least the unknown. Um, I can't remember if I heal up or not. I think long distance relationship, I, I think I just like kind of heal from that. Karnak, I, th I took him to rank three just because I had to use skill resources. Um, ah, he's better than he was. You know, he's got, I mean, I mainly just took him up because I needed to, and I, he was duped two, three times, and I just... He doesn't require uh, deep wounds like a lot of bleed or most of bleed champions. Um, so that was a plus because I, I don't run max deep wounds. Um, and then also he's got that passive true strike now, which is nice. Um, and it's not a you know it's not a buff, so it can't get removed or anything. And he's better than he was. I mean I you know I haven't used him yet in anything really, but. Uh, you know, what are you gonna do? I didn't have a lot of good skill options and I had to use resources, so I'm not one to let resources expire. I'd rather rank uh, a six star champ, to be honest, than let stuff expire. I even rent, I even rank uh, four stars now um, for some of this, you know, four stars get a little more use now in some of these like side quests and whatnot. And for dueling purposes. There we go, light attack, get some spacing there. Odin with the hop. I love his moveset, I mean, he's such a good looking champ. Definitely looks like Odin. And you wanna to try to stay, you wanna to try to stay in close to him after you set up with the level one. And what I was saying earlier is like, so you wanna, what is it, heavy, heavy, to get to two tridents, uh, and then a third heavy after that, um, to uh, stack energize, and then you want a heavy again, once or twice, to get back to two tridents, and then throw the level one, so you can get block prof, or yeah, block profi pro proficiency, and uh, true strike up. And then you want to try to stay close to him for basically the remainder of the fight because those buffs will uh, pause whenever you're close to the opponent. And then the level two refreshes all his buffs. Pretty sure. Any active buffs currently on him? Yeah, this is kind of ugly. Bum. But Odin, you know, showcasing how tanky he is. That's what this is here. <laughs> uh, no, so yeah, you can go, I mean, Depending on the length of the fight, you go level one to get your block prof proficiency and your true strike up. And then uh, either level twos after that to keep refreshing and bomb them with that huge level two, which you also want to throw at two uh, Odin Force. That's what it is, Tridents. Um, you want to try to throw it at two because it's more damage. And I think that's how you refresh the buffs. Um, or you can go to level three, which is ideal in longer fights. Level three, and then, because I think it gives you an aptitude or something, and then back to level two. Level two. You want to just rotate those level twos after that. But it's basically everything you want to do before you do any special. You want to 
you want to you want to be at two Odin Force charges. I mean, that's easier to remember. Just try to even when you're heavy. You know, when you're heavy, to, uh, if you have two Odin Force, you stack those Energize. Um, better stuff happens when you have two Odin Force charges. Whenever you activate any of those things, level one, level two, level three, heavy, all of it. Um. So yeah, Odin doesn't, uh, he doesn't armor break. His son does, my white whale champ. Um, but uh, he doesn't, and that's, you know, I think it's kind of, I think it's kind of cool because Thor is like the ultimate armor break champ. I mean, his armor break stacks twice, it caps there, but it is like 9,000 armor reduction or something like that. I think it's like 4,400 per armor break. So you stack two and they're at like 9K, might be slightly more uh, armor reduction. Um, so that's awesome. And then Odin is kind of like, you know, doesn't have armor break at all. But in some situations, that's actually a good thing. Um, you know, you might get punished. Like, you know, not that you would use him for Dragon Man, but uh, you could. You know, you can't really use OG Thor, or you really don't want to use any champ that armor breaks against Dragon Man, because you're going to degenerate the whole time. Um, so, and there's other instances where, you know, you may not want to armor break. So it's cool to have that... Uh, that option, you know, that contrast. But uh, yeah, he still, uh, you know, slays Nimrod here. Because, I mean, Nimrod isn't subject to armor break anyway. He gets armor broken, but it doesn't, it's minus 100% potency. So armor breaks don't do anything. You see, I just refreshed the uh, the buffs there from the level two. That true strike of that block prop was about to run out. Straight to the face, Miss Perry. Bad, right in the face. A lot of that. Yeah, that heavy is wild. Love it. Single hit, um, and it's got a lot of range. Like I said, I think it's like it brings the screen in close to you whenever you heavy. I mean, it's it, it, it has a lot more reach than you might think. Odin can't ignore miss though. He's got the true strike which is definitely uh, unique to Cosmic. I mean, or I should say it's it's pretty, it's very uncommon within the Cosmic class. Um, but he does, uh, he does have that sweet true strike. But he can't do anything for miss, you know, he's gonna get wrecked by that. Visible woman. Uh, yeah, I passed over her a few times in like various, Nexus uh, crystals, you know. Um, I mean, I kind of wanted her just to complete the six star set because I do have six star thing, uh, six star human torch, and obviously six star Mr. Fantastic. So I did want her just to complete the set, but uh, I'm never going to play with her. I mean, you know, I had her five star, I've got the whole f five star set all ranked except her because. Not that she's not good, and not that, you know, she can't be good, but from what I understand, like, you have to be able to intercept a lot, and you have to be able to, uh, basically hit them without being hit at all on your block, or hit, you know, period, to maintain her damage, I think, something like that, like, you want to basically stay invisible and keep that vulnerability buff on them, I'm sorry, vulnerability debuff, but in order to do that, you can't take blocked hits, and or actual hits, which is kind of tricky and skilled for sure, uh, but just a little long. Feels like it'd be a little long to me. Um, so yeah, you know, her, she does have that awesome synergy for Mr. Fantastic though. I mean, Mr. Fantastic with with the full uh, Fantastic Four team is, is pretty ridiculous. But that takes four, people four slots you know bomb that level two is so good 
hit into that miss. Put her shield on cooldown. Still not entirely sure how Invisible Woman's shield works. Like, I get the whole cooldown thing. When she's invisible, you gotta hit into it to start that cooldown. But then, like, it's like she does have some massive damage reduction while the shield is either up or, uh, I don't know, in transition. Like, there, at some point, she does have, like, some crazy high uh, damage reduction. Um, and I still don't really know how that works. I just haven't bothered to look, to be honest. Um, here we go with Vulture. I like to, generally, I like to do the hardest paths in any of the legendary EQ runs. I like to do the harder paths first, just because, like, you know, descending order, hardest to easiest. Get the hard stuff out of the way. And maybe if I need like a specific champ that may be in war or something, uh, I try to use them, do those hard paths while I have that window of opportunity so they're not locked in either, defense or attack. Vulture's another champ like, ah, uh, you know, I did, I, know, I don't even like Vulture in the comments. He's never really did it for me. I mean, I, I love Michael Keaton, uh, his character's fine as far as the villain goes in the Spider-Man movies, but not particularly menacing to me. Uh, not exactly sure how much his rework did for him. I don't know any Vulture users. I mean, I did watch Karate Mike's video on him, and uh, I think it's very similar playstyle to Dr. Octopus in that you want to like do yo-yo intercepts and lots of backdrafts. Um, but yeah, uh, that's all well and good, you know, like Dr. Octopus, um, whom I've wanted to rank before, but man, if that AI is passive at all, it just doesn't work, you know, it doesn't work at all. So as you can see, uh, I don't think I've used any potions in this. I think I've just been healing from the long distance relationship among other debuffs this whole path. So that's kind of cool. But yeah, Vulture, like, uh, I don't know. I know he's got some synergies to, like, make him incinerate immune. Uh, or what is it? Incinerate... I think he's already incinerate immune, but make him poison immune and maybe, like, shock immune or something. Like, with Ultron and something else. But even then, like, damage is kind of pants. Um, now, this fight was awesome. What have we got? 326,000 health. This crossbones is definitely jacked. White Max pre-fight, and you can see this This was the first run, and it was just like, why is APOC there? I'm, I'm looking at APOC like, oh yeah, well, <laughs> I didn't do anything as far as getting horsemen, so useless. I don't even know why, yeah, I was about to say, like, why, you know? Yeah, I don't know what I was thinking here. I think, I was like, oh, well, I'll just, uh, because, I mean, if you, if you basically, uh -oh. if you, uh, I've spoke about this before, if you go into a fight, you know, and you die out, and he, you've got Cable on the team, you just die with APOC and revive, he's at max genetic code, you don't even have to win the fight. And I think that's what I was thinking here, I was like, oh, I'll just die, and then dumbass, like, uh, yeah, you're still not at max genetic code, idiot. So, yeah, I just kill him, you know. I'm like, okay, well, that was a waste of time and the waste of the slot. So now we get into Rogue. Feats of power, adaptive, uh, truly great. What is that, the well-timed block thing? Yep, enhanced incinerate, which is only from his level two. Rising Sun, so this is, the Rising Sun is the, basically the tricky one here. You wanna, that's the one where I think after you stack Furies on every hit, um, and if you don't, at, at 10, uh, everyone after 10 you start degenerating so you have to like uh, you have to purify those with a heavy so you want to try to land heavies um, Captain Marvel definitely takes full advantage of this and Hulk does too but we're talking about counter class with Hulk and my Hulk is only a 5 star he's rank 5, 6200 but still I don't like that counter class number but Rogue's definitely meant for this like I get my bearings here. I think I soloed every try with Rogue. I think the idea with her is to uh, 
you want to get that level one and grab those buffs from him and then ideally be close to a level two so you can roll right into you can maintain those uh buffs keep those buffs with full uptime by touching him but then um do that and then basically cycle the level twos while maintaining your buffs and there's some interactions here where like if you steal his furies it's like he can't gain furies and i don't know that they count towards the node i don't know it, some weird interactions going on here. And the truly great, I think, is for that, uh, uh, what was it, True Strike or whatever, uh, it's not Prowess, that blue one that I grabbed when you when you block his specials. Uh, I'm sorry, Welton block his specials. It's like the same buff I get uh, on my AQ path. I have that Tech Path in AQ, same thing. Or after the Tech Path, it's the same thing. Or you fight Mangog and like Yellow Jacket and then uh, Mr. Negative. Yeah, this is. Ah! Oh, 1%. Yeah, this is a fun one. This is my first fight against him, and it turned out to be the most uh, nerve wracking. Yep, got a little uh, draft back intercept. Yeah. Man, Rogue is so satisfying. Just can't use my gem on her yet. Still looking for that Thor. That buff right there, true damage, there it is. That's what it is. I don't know how much of a difference it makes, but it's hard to grab anyway. Those, the two times I did that in this, I was just trying to well time block his special or, you know, just well time block period. And then I grabbed that buff, but God, he just pounded on that block. Did not want to throw a heavy. I get more familiar with this fight though after this first time, this first run. So I start DJing like crazy here, but I'm like, well, gotta press. Yeah, rogue, love her. She is a lot of fun. My five star, still suitable though, still adequate. That's why I can't bring myself to do uh, the Awakening on the 6 star yet. Plus she is SIG 200 of the 5 star. And uh, her SIG is important. And I don't necessarily think it's like vital to be at 200. I think it's 40% chance to uh, crit on specials with a uh, max SIG. And then like, I think SIG 80 or so is, is sufficient for her. I think she gets like 25%, maybe 30% to crit around there on specials. So this is the second path, um, Odin again. And this is when I switched over to, uh, yeah, had to sub in Hyperion for this path. I think I started, I ran it once and I got to Abomination. I'm like, oh, okay. Like I, I scouted a bit and I saw Abomination coming up and I was like, meh, I'll press. I'll throw bodies at him first and then I'll throw Odin at him. And that didn't work out at all. Cause that point he's just too big. Odin, you know, they all died so fast that poison stacks and you're just, just done. Can't do anything against it. Still an easy champ to fight, but you have to have a counter, a poison counter. Um, so there's the two Odin Force, the Tridents. And then I uh, one more knockdown here, or am I going for the level two? Yeah, I already did the true strike. Level two. Boom. Oh, there's red numbers. Secondary damage is massive. And I think I just, yeah, cycle level twos, I mean, that's pretty much the, the game plan here, you know? Keep that one level one up, and then two level twos ends it. Bomb. With his tentacle, you know? When he gets parried. It's good. It's the little things. Immortal Abomination is so ugly. He is a really good champion. Um, and I have him at rank two. That's another one slated for rank three. Uh, he's unduped, uh, which means his ramp is slower. This parry there. Um, but he's, he is a really good champ. He's just ugly as sin. He's got like all, I don't even know, human two or three human faces going on. And like, just an ugly champ. But definitely very, very good. 
Hyperion though, this guy, such a beast. Still. Kabam really uh, outdid themselves with Hyperion. He is definitely a blunt instrument, but he's got utility in the sense that, you know, he's got that uh, passive power gain, which is just, there's not a lot of chance in the game, game with that power flood or passive power gain, whatever you want to call it. Um, and he definitely is, he's definitely awesome. You know, you can sit there and just stand back and let the power flood do everything and spam level ones or spam level twos, you know, do the level three rotation, however you want to do it. And the fact that he stacks those powerful furies with just a heavy attack is pretty crazy. Always with the wake ups. Odin's good at him too. He can do it after a heavy. Get that five five times the energized stack. Um throw two. About to throw the level one. Block cross and uh, true strike. Let's get the two Odin Force. I always try to push Moon Knight to uh, two bars of power because that level one is just annoying. I think it's, I mean, you could dex out of the second hit and, and dash back in to retaliate from his level one, but it's a really tight window. Um, but I think that what's, what I find easier that I, I think it works is that if you're close enough, you just block the first two hits and then you basically block or ideally well time block the second hit right here and dash in and see how he's open. That seems to be easier and more consistent. And then throw this freaking trite into his face. And we move on. Moon Knight needs a buff really bad. He is awful. He's got some good some good synergies for him, but I mean, who's running a synergy team for Moon Knight, you know? Seems kind of ridiculous. I mean, if you really like the champ, you know, go for it, but uh, yeah. He's just not good. It's not even fun, you know, to be honest. Like, I remember back in the day, there was some, there was a couple players that really liked him with like, when pure skill was, you know, before it got nerfed. Uh, but that was a long time ago, years now. But nothing's changed with Moon Knight. He's, you know, he's bad, the meta's changed. We've got so many more new champs, pure skills nerfed. Like, he's just junk. I wonder what they're gonna do with, uh, Moon Knight in terms of uh, the new movie coming out, or was it a show? Oscar Isaac or whatnot. I don't know why I used Hyperion for this fight. Uh, maybe I wanted to save, oh, I think it's because I was trying to get Odin sleep. I think it's what it was. So I was like, well, I might as well snag a, a rest period for Odin. I don't think I'd die here either. Maybe, maybe I just like kamikaze with him. I don't remember. Um, Fang the dark. He's good, he is good. He is another champ, you can't wake up intercept. That's why I don't do it against him. You just can't do it, he's too quick to get up and he will smack you. He will definitely smack you in the face. But yeah, like Moon Knight, I don't know what's gonna happen with that. I, I'm kind of inclined to, to uh, think that they're gonna, they may buff him a bit, but I think they're just gonna debut like another Moon Knight, you know? That's kind of what I think they're gonna do with Blade. Blade's still a boss. I've talked about him. I mean, he's still really good. Um, but I think with Morbius coming out, there has got to be a, a correlation there as far as synergies, whether Morbius has a synergy that, you know, requires Blade to make Morbius even better. Um, and then maybe that synergy simultaneously, you know, I'm hoping it, it expands danger sense um, to another champ, you know, besides just Ghost Rider activating it. Uh, I mean, you got Mephisto and... Dormammu that activate Mystic Danger Sense, um, but uh, I'm hoping that like Morbius activates it, you know, just like Ghost Rider does. But it's giving you another option instead of using like dated, you know, old ass Ghost Rider who, eh, you know, he's another champ. Like he is, he was good in the day, you know, but you really need to max him out to to get the the most out of those uh, Furies, and no one's maxing Ghost Rider. Hey. He's another champ where like, my issue with the champs 
like Black Widow Deadly Origin, Stealth, um, Player, uh, who else? Um, Ghost Rider, Cosmic Ghost Rider, uh, a couple more, but those off the top of my head, they require full five hit combos. Uh, I don't know that Black Widow Deadly Origin does. Hers is the double hit medium, which annoys the heck out of me. Stealth has both of those things. An awkward double hit medium, awkward move set, um, his timings are weird, and you have to finish uh, combos with full combos and then a, a light ender, you know, light and or medium ender, depending on what you want to do. And that drives me nuts, you know, it really does. Uh, because there's only so many fights when you just cannot, um, you're not going to get a full five hit combo in. Um, you know, it's just not going to happen. And, you know, that's integral to their kit. Like for Claire, it's required for switching to her, you know, a different mode. You have to finish with the light attack and it has to be a full combo, full five hit combo. Um, CGR, same thing. Uh, not that these champs aren't good or even great. Definitely. I mean, I have CGR at rank three, you know. Uh, he's a ridiculously good champ, you know. Immunities, um, damage, it's all, both of those things are there, you know. And he's, he's fun. He's a lot of fun to play. Um, it's just that, you know, I don't I don't really use him much. Um, I like the simplicity. And, you know, different strokes for different folks. Um, I like the simplicity of Thor, you know. Straightforward, blood instrument, Rex, easy. Um, no utility at all, but man, great war champ. CGR, you know, you have to finish that full, uh, full four or five hit combo with a light ender, you know, to get his power gain for that uh, judgment. Um, same with, you know, Ghost Rider. And that just, it, it just doesn't present itself um, as often as I'd like it to, you know. Against the Vaders, it's basically impossible. we go again though so rogue this is another uh crossbone tip you can see i try to uh i try to bait that heavy and you can dash in i think between the level one hits to touch him to keep buffs up keep that um your to refresh those buffs if you're quick bam So it was close to a level two there. Throw the level one. Try to keep the, uh, refresh those buffs. I don't know why I didn't dash in there. They got a whole block here, no. I think I just commit to pushing him red. I'm like, why don't I just push him red? And then there we go. There we go, get below. Um. Rogue is a lot of fun. And I've talked about it before, you know, I really wish that like um, float champs, champs that float, Rogue, Captain Marvel, Movie, um, who else? I know there's other champs, uh, but both of them, off the top of my head, they float. They're not touching the ground. You know, they should, they should be immune uh, or bypass, if you want to use that terminology, um, like root. Not that that's even prevalent in the game, um, but maybe some other root and maybe some other stuff, you know? I mean, they're floating, they're not touching the ground, you know? Um, it'd be cool if they just, you know, they put that in there. Kabam's pretty good about some Easter egg type of stuff. I mean, you got both Cyclopses that are immune to Havoc's um, plasma detonate, which is kind of cool, you know? I mean, they're brothers, it makes sense. Um, but yeah. I'd like to see him do something with floating champs. So Rogue, second path down. Another successful solo, Hunter hits. Moving on to the third path here. Red Skull, this guy. He's not very good, is he? <laughs> I took mine to rank three. Um, you know, he pairs really well with Overseer and uh, a, a Mortal Abomination. 
That's about as good as you're gonna get. Best output you're gonna get from Red Skull. Well, not true. If you add Odin in there, and you give him the three buffs on uh, pre-fight buffs, man, he, he it helps him a lot because he gets uh, increased damage from every buff on him, regardless. It can be, it doesn't have to be a unique uh, buff like Silver Surfer. So it definitely helps his damage. Stack the Energize through the level one. Got the True Strike and the Block prof Proficiency up. Um, I do like Red Skull's uh, design and his animation, so I mean, you know, I can say that about most champs in this game. I mean, Kabam, Kabam really does have the uh, the uh, design team. They they put in a lot of good work. They just need to work on the bugs. And then the level two to blast it. I love how that trident comes back to him, like like the Mjolnir ha hammer. Anti-Venom. Uh, pulled him from the featured, this current featured. Um, duped him too, so that was fun. That's basically, him and Hyperion were the two most sought after champs for me. I couldn't pull Spider-Man 2099 from the last featured, and uh, but I was gonna grind for him, which I did. I ended up doing that basic grind, and I got him. Um, I haven't used him yet. <laughs> But isn't that how it goes? I, I wanted him. He's, he's an awesome champ. He's a lot of fun. He's got an amazing kit. Um, and that anti-venom synergy is really, really good for him. It's a good tool to have for Alliance War. Um, and like I said, you know, I don't like having just a champ that provides a synergy um, as just, you know, the synergy on the team. I like to have a functional unless they're total rubbish. But uh, Anti-Venom's pretty good. You know, I haven't used him much, but I did rank him up, took him to rank three. He's uh, similar to uh, Reed in the sense that he does place a lot of debuffs. Um, but he is a longer ramp champ. Ideally, you want to throw the level one and then level three. Get, go to the level three. And then you basically just throw level twos after that, from, from what I understand. And he gets a massive fury on the level two. Uh, for every debuff that I think is either removed or on the opponent at the time. Uh, but I think his main his his main thing is that he's poison and incinerate immune, which is great for um, hazard shift pads depending on the type of hazard shift it is. Um, yeah, and he's got obviously that awesome synergy for uh, Spider-Man 2099. Iron Patriot, this turd. I think he does have a synergy now that makes him a little better, but he's still bad. Make no mistake, he is terrible. And I don't know that who who is like, oh man, I really love Iron Patriot. Like, I get that like we play this game for fun and that, you know, you want to play with the champs that you like. I mean, not everyone likes Silver Surfer or Rogue, you know. I who could care less about either one of them. I like both of them, and I think both of them are really, really good champs. But Iron Patriot, not only is he not a good champ, but like who likes him anyway? It's the thing. Like, that's my question. It's like a gimmick Iron Man who's also terrible. Bob! Yeah, there's still a lot of champs that need to buff in this game, and I just don't, I don't know if they're gonna get around to doing everybody. I mean, OG Captain America, War Cap, I mean, World 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 War II Cap, Captain America, I mean, he's terrible. Both of them are just bad. I mean, OG Captain America has got some cool synergies for him now, like the one where like, if the opponent's suffering from a fatigue debuff, um, I don't remember who activates it, but if the opponent's suffering from a fatigue debuff, Captain America uh, basically gains like minus 125% um, 
ability power rate. So like against like Mystics or uh, let's say Hyperion, uh, anyone with that power flood or passive power gain, um, they it's going to be reversed as long as they're suffering from a fatigue debuff, which they're going to be all the time. If they're if you just basically block a few times with Captain America, that's really really powerful. That's really good. But who on earth is using Captain America over some some other science that's going to do that as good or better? And they're going to kill the opponent way faster because Captain America's damage is pants. It's terrible. Um, what they update his level one charge, his like shield charge bash thing. Uh, I mean, cool. You know, it's got some what patriotic like shadows now or something. I mean, that's all cool, but like, uh, let's maybe uh, work on his kit. You know, let's let's fix that. Um, but what are you gonna do? I mean, I guess maybe it's for like early early players, you know, small accounts, just started, you know, give them access to some some amazing synergies, you know, some tools for uh, progression, you know, I guess. Spider-Man 99, not really a good defender at all. Easy to uh, evade specials. He doesn't even have any native evasion, like basically all the other spiders. He's for sure an attacker. I don't know what I was thinking there. Like, yeah, again, practicing spacing. I do love that Odin can wake up intercept after a heavy though. That's big. Oh man, you, you probably noticed, I don't know if you did, but uh, I didn't go for the level one because I do know that Spider-Man 2099 gains like minus 75% damage from all sources if the opponent has a true strike buff or passive. I believe is more or less the terminology there. So by throwing that level one with Odin, you're gonna get that true strike up and uh, he's, it's gonna just take way, way longer to kill him because he's gonna have, you know, that damage resistance until true strike drops. So I just uh, avoided that altogether and went straight to the level two here. Bomb. Um, I am getting a little life back here from these willpower heals. Look at those heals. What was it? I think it was just at like 300 and something with those two debuffs. Owns a tank, man. He's got a big health pool. He's got excellent block prof proficiency. I just cannot say words, man. Enunciate. Um, level two coming. Parry and... Wop. Um, so yeah. Evade True Strike against Spider-99 whenever possible. Does not pan out very well. Whew. I don't know why I didn't place a pre-fight there with white mags. Uh, probably, I think I looked at it, I was like, meh. Maybe I was just pushing the envelope, see if I could do it with Odin, challenge myself, you know? Once that true strike gets up though, I, do, I mean, I really can't say enough about that. Being able to just ignore evasion from these big ass, you know, PI champs is, is really nice. Black Widow, she's a turd, but you know, a big Black Widow, one small evasion, and she could take half to three quarters of your life bar doesn't matter how bad the chip is, if they're, you know, if they've got 9,000 attack and, you know, 250,000 health, like, well, it's gonna hurt when they hit you. Um, so yeah, you can see the wake up intercepts there. Wake up and he's fast enough, like a lot of champs, to uh, dash in when they have a special and be able to either block their special when they get up or dex out of it. Um, and I find that Staying offensive like that, dashing in uh, when they have a special, often it like coaxes a special out of them. So, you know, the AI wants to wake up and hit you with that special. And uh, so oftentimes they'll throw it. And if you're quick enough, block it or dex out of it. Keeps that rhythm going, you know. So third solo now, we got a uh, guidance boost. Might as well just place all three of these for Rogue, you know? 
She's only going to benefit from the one. Uh, the first one was a threat struck, where it increases fury potency or duration. Wake up. Yeah, I think right there you can get him. Uh oh. Smack. Yep. Oh. Dumpster truck. Oh. He's got like garbage truck hands. Big mechanical things. This is, yeah, this one worked out well where I actually, I keep the the buffs, I keep touching them, keep those buffs up, and I'm able to cycle these level twos. You can see how much quicker it goes. And that, like, because I stole one of his furies, it's like I don't gain furies from the rising sun, which is an interesting interaction. Full yellow bar, that's probably the cleanest solo against him in uh, all of these. Yeah, I don't know how the interaction works. It's like I steal his fury, and as long as I keep touching him, I can only maintain that existing fury from him, and I won't gain any from the rising sun. I don't know if it's supposed to work that way, or if it's bugged, or what, but I'm pretty sure that's what's happening there. And then, what did I drop? Yeah, no Hyperion this is the same. Yeah, I had this team last round, didn't I? Pretty sure. King Groot, he's gotten a lot better. I used to run him as a five star, rank five, um, way back uh, for AQ. Even as a four star um, when I was a young summoner and resources and, and potions were just costly, harder to come by, um, no compensation, right? And uh, yeah, King Groot, man, just a healing engine. Still is, but now his damage is much better. Uh, I think I, I don't even know if I have him as a six star. I don't think I do. But still have him as a five star, never use him. He is much better. We got a couple guys that they really like him for uh, AQ. And I don't doubt that he's a total beast for AQ now. Always was. Now he's just got more damage. He is, uh, I do like Man-Thing a lot, and he's got a, a great synergy with Man-Thing, you know? He gives Man-Thing uh, poison on every parry, which is awesome. I mean, it's a it's a brief poison, but even still, you know, being parrying and be able to uh, proc a poison on every hit of parry is pretty sweet. I don't remember what uh, Man-Thing gains from that synergy. Like, I think, what is it? more furies during cooldown phase so he like get, i think maybe gains two furies per phase now or additional furies or something something like that i never really used him um uh, whenever i bring him with man thing i just used him for the synergy for man thing star lord star lord just drops see there's the easier paths now i got those hard ones out of the way so now i just kind of cut through all these defenders pretty easily. I think on each one of these pads, there's generally one defender that's like problematic or tough. And I think they kind of put them at the end from what, what I remember. Oh, excuse me. Drop that level two. Yeah, I think I, I didn't throw the level one with two Odin Force up, so I only have the true strike. I don't have the uh, the block prof proficiency. Boom. Oh. 
Civil Warrior. Oh, man, his, uh, uh, I still don't like him at all. His rotation's funky. You gotta like, you have to like back up a lot, hold block a lot to convert armor ups to furies for like, what, 10 seconds or something like that. Um, yeah, still don't like his play style. I, I do really like his, uh, his heavy. It can be spammable and it's got a lot of range. Both hits lunge at you and it heal blocks. I mean, it's a really, really good heavy. Um, but apart from that, I just don't really like much else about him. It's level two power drains, but like, it's not like full power drain, like uh, either vision. Um, his level one kind of sucks and it lasts so long it's annoying when you're fighting against them because like you can't just retaliate immediately you that that orb is like it persists so you have to wait longer than you think i will say that he is kind of a nightmare defender for this unstoppable armor global and war though he will sit there because he already spans level one all the time and uh, he gains more and more armor ups, so he'll just sit there and stack armor ups and stack armor ups and, you know, unstoppable armor is just, you see unstoppable, passive unstoppable just non-stop on this guy. So, uh, he's challenging for the global, but, I mean, his moveset is still very easy to counter. You just have to kind of play around that unstoppable, which can be, it could be a nightmare. I think Penny, like, I don't remember. I think she either, like, removes True Strike or it doesn't work against her or something. I don't know. I have her as well. I have her as a rank three. She's unduped. Um, a lot of people, you know, there's a couple people that, like, really like her. One guy said he, it's going to be his, his next rank four. Um, I mean, good for that. Like, I like seeing, you know, non-conventional rank four champs. I mean, it, I'd love to rank four some non-conventional rank four champs but you know gotta play the prestige game as i discussed i gladly wanted to rank four um silver surfer probably gonna do doom next love doom uh, but he definitely needs specials unless you're like i guess there's an argument to be had for like if you're running diablo or um what is it diablo or annihilus um, for Doom to gain that guaranteed crit on uh, if they're suffering from a stagger. So like once you get a stagger up, you could sit there and like, you know, uh, medium to shock and then heavy. Uh, basically stick with, you know, heavies the entire fight and you'll get a guaranteed crit on each heavy. So I think in that scenario, there's an argument to be made for Doom not needing specials. But generally, yes, you need to spam specials with Doom, um, which means he's terrible with suicides, which I don't mind because I don't run them. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Doom is, he's amazing. There's no question. He is far and away the best mystic in my opinion. And I think in most players' opinion. Um, He's super, super tanky. Uh, he's got a pretty, uh, pretty healthy, um, a pretty, pretty sizable health pool. Uh, but that crit resistance, I think, is really what what makes him so tanky. Um, armor break immune, you know, that's awesome. Shock immune. Um, but I think the reason I don't really want to rank for him next is. Uh, because he doesn't need it, in my opinion. Like, he doesn't particularly need the, the additional health, which, in my opinion, is kind of the, the best reason to, to take a champ to rank four is for that additional health pool. Some champs, like Spider-Man 99, 2099, like, he needs more health. He is a he is a glass cannon of sorts. On a final boss node in war, sure, he doesn't need the extra health because he gains all that... Um, all that resistance because the opponent has true strike damage re resistance you know but anywhere else he could definitely benefit from a larger health pool uh, a lot of science champs they don't really need it you know they don't need that rank four um, 
but but ultimately it's always just nice to have that extra health pool you know some chance like overseer he benefits greatly from rank four because of the fury that fury that he gets scales really well uh on that fourth rank um but doom i don't know i just don't think he necessarily he doesn't necessarily need the rank four for for you know much he kills stuff already really effectively already really tanky um damage is solid uh provided you you know you have access to specials um but yeah like there's so many rank four dooms is the other thing like everyone's got rank four doom now that's you know an end game player if they're playing for prestige or even if not so yeah i mean i you know i will end up probably taking him to rank four next um uh, I could do, I might, could do Hercules, but I only really use Hercules in, uh, do I die here? No. I only really use Hercules in AQ, to be honest. Like, he's an amazing champ. Too good, in my opinion. Like, he's just too good. Largely why I never really got into Corvus or Ghost. Um, still not into either one of them. I have a dupe six-star Corvus, and I, uh, he's not even ranked. You know, I got Corvus as a five star way late in the in the game. Like, you know, I didn't have him for AQ. You know, that whole the whole timeout thing. You know, like I I only got a little bit of that. Experienced a little little bit of that for AQ. Um, but yeah, like they're just wildly OP. Um, and I think Hercules is like, you know. The next Corvus, if you if you want to, you know, go that go that route. Um, he's got the you know, you can't rely on the Im immortality in war, but it still activates uh, often, and uh, depending on what the opponent's assassin level is, you know. But even without that, even without the immortality, the dude is just so good, so powerful. His ramp doesn't take that long. He, uh, he's got, you know, the utility um, with the immortality. He's got it with the stun immunity. You know, once he gets any feats of strength, uh, he's essentially, he's stun immune. Um, it takes a feat of strength and, and basically purifies any stun. Um, he takes less damage from liquid courage poison and bleed, I believe. Um, yeah, he's just he's just awesome, you know. He's got he's got a taunt, or yeah, I guess it's a taunt. Aggression uh, is what they call it, I think. And uh, is it aggression? What is it? Um, I don't remember what it's called. Something like that. That debuff that he places when you do like light, light, or light, medium, and and dash back, um, instigate. I don't even damn know. I can't think of it. But yeah, like he's just super, super good. And I can see why, you know, he's banned. He's on the ban list often in war. Um, I believe that was Kabam's bro Kabam Broccoli, uh, the guy, the developer who left to go work on another game. I believe that was his last champ. Um, and I think he was, from what I've read, I think he was kind of notorious for making, you know, pushing the boundaries on um, the champ's power level and whatnot like i'm pretty sure he made doom he developed doom silver surfer um hercules possibly corvus but uh yeah hercules is definitely something else and so like those two right there would be my next there it is man that heavy um those two would be my next uh one of those is going to be my next rank five just for prestige purposes but don't really want to do either one, if I'm being honest. Uh, Silver Surfer, definitely. Wanted to do him first. Um, and it just so happens that he's got amazing prestige. Best in the game, so that all worked out. Another full yellow bar. Yo! They got one path left, guys. If you're still here, wow. An hour into this video, I'm still rambling. Um, but, uh, yeah, like... It's going to be one of those two. I could do Namor, but meh, I don't even use him for anything. He, like I said, he's really, really niche. Um, definitely has use, 
when you need Namor, there's like no one else that can do what he does with his, you know, kit. But uh, it's seldom, very, very seldom. Uh, and he loves suicides. I don't run suicides, so he was basically a prestige rank, and you know, he's the highest mutant and highest uh, one of the highest prestige, top five, I believe. I think he's fifth. I used, he might be sixth now because I think Omega Sentinel is now third overall, uh, overtaking Ragthor, I believe. Oh, excuse me. Um, Overseer, he's one of those where if you just throw one special, you get a debuff on you, and uh, you can heal from that the whole fight. Not unlike, uh, not unlike uh, your boy, King Root, and his armor break, that permanent armor break. And you see it went away because I believe, I don't know, it's worded weird, but like if you throw that level one with Overseer, it like removes a special concussion or something like that, or I don't know, it's something to that effect. I think that's why it went away. That or it's bugged and it dropped off for no reason. I don't know. Boom. Full yellow bar. Let's go. Um, but yeah, so like uh, we got Namor, Hercules, Doom, Guardian, Nimrod, who isn't Max Sig yet, but he will be. Um, Red Guardian as well, but it won't be Guardian or, or Red Guardian. Um, Overseer, who isn't Max Sig yet either, but he's up there for Prestige, but it won't be him. It's gonna be, it's gonna be, uh, probably gonna be Doom, just to get it done with, get him out of the way. And I mean, you know, Break 4 Doom is badass. I mean, there's no question. It's just, I'd rather do She-Hulk, um, OG Thor, even though I don't have him yet. Um, uh, yeah, there's a handful of champs I'd rather do. Hell, I'd rather do a Rank 4 Odin than either one of the ones I just mentioned. Uh, any of the prestige ones, Doom or Namor, you know, or Hercules. Um, rank for Cable, you know, like Cable is ridiculous, and a rank for Cable now he wouldn't benefit as much. He great, he gained the health, but um, he doesn't have any Fury, and I, I don't know from what I've gathered, like Fury seems to scale the best for rank four. Um, no, he'd still gain more damage from his Dejan, but uh, who else? I can't think of who else is in the top of my roster that I'd want to. I mean, Nimrod, honestly, I'd, I'd like to do him before any of the others. And he's not out of the realm of possibility because he has got, he's got great prestige as a tech. Um, I had already kind of considered Nimrod as my next rank four, provided I could get him to 6200, uh, you know, when it's time. Um, but then Omega Sentinel just dropped or, you know, her, her spotlight dropped, and she's got that amazing prestige. Um, and I have a tech gem, so that's fun. Not going to grind for her because I'm sure that arena is going to be a nightmare. It would take me probably at least 10,000 units worth of refreshes and whatnot to grind for her in a, a, an entire weekend of soul-sucking grinding. So, yep, that's not going to happen, but I am porting for next feature. She'll be in it. I did the math, and uh, it's going to be Craven, Toad, Sauron, Sam Wilson, Misty Knight, and Omega Sentinel, provided that she uh, debuts first over Cap Captain Britain, which on... Uh, on my, she is like her projected um, debut date is uh, is like March 10th. Yeah, today. Um, so if she does in fact come out today, which I'm sure she is, she will be in the next featured, and the cutoff will be at Captain Britain, which is um, good because Captain Britain doesn't excite me. I don't think she really excites many. In the comics, Captain Britain's a, a male, 
Not that that matters. Um, I mean, I think it's kind of cool that it's a female. She looks cool, but she just seems similar to Psylocke, and she's got a lot going on with Psylocke. If I remember correctly, in the comics, Braddock, Ryan Braddock, I think is Captain Britain's name, and then Betsy Braddock, Psylocke, is uh, their brother and sister. And so, um, I haven't even looked at Betsy's, uh, Captain Britain's bio, but... I do know that she has like synergy with it, with Psylocke for herself and Psylocke, but I've discussed Psylocke. She is just not very good. Um, anytime you need her, you know, to suppress power or control power, uh, really suppress or control power, she's not really good at it because it's probably a power flood situation or some kind of passive power gain, spite, you know, some of that effect, and she doesn't do jack or that. Yeah, she's got, what, a power lock and special two? Well, you have to get the special two first. And then two, it's not like magic's power lock. It doesn't last at all, you know? Um, her damage is kind of pants. Like, yeah, if you stack, what, a ton of side charges and drop a heavy, sure, it'll, it'll blow them up, but that takes forever and, uh, yeah, I just don't like her rotation, her play style. Even with, um, even with, uh, Horseman, you know, still just not, not really a fan. Um, and Betsy Braddock kind of, I'm sorry, uh, Captain Britain, her name may be Betsy. I don't know which direction they went with in this game, but she has a lot of, she just seems... I don't know, share some similarities with Psylocke and just the fact that she has a synergy with Psylocke. Um, already, I'm kind of put off by it. So, um, yeah, I'm glad that she's not going to be in this feature. Um, because I'm looking to get Blade, Omega Sentinel, um, Sam Wilson. I want all three of those. Uh, I wanted Sam Wilson and Blade initially until I saw how good Omega Sentinel is going to be um, and that she is going to be in this feature uh, and her prestige. Uh, but I, you know, if I don't pull Omega Sentinel and I get Sam Wilson, I'd be perfectly fine with that. Um, he definitely, he looks amazing. Um, he's going to be able to ignore Miss, you know. So yeah, I wouldn't buy that. Um, I do have a tech gem, so it's just a it's just a matter of pulling either one of them. Both great. Uh, if I pull both, that'd be tough, you know, because like I think that they both need their signature, and this is really early on. I have no idea how either one is actually going to turn out. Um, but I, I think that Sam Wilson needs his signature more than her. Not 100% on that, but like Prestige, obviously she needs it. So we'll just have to wait and see, but I am glad that, that uh, Cap Britain is going to be in the one after that. Um, wrap it up here, guys. Hour and 15 minute video. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed this, you know, maybe learn something or just, uh, you know, Got some entertainment value. That's why I'm doing this. You know? Drop the white mags. Next one I'm doing uh, is going to be the skill EQ. Skill EQ uh, pads with... Uh... Damn, I don't remember who the boss was. But I, uh, <laughs> I'm using Daredevil Hell's Kitchen for basically all the skill pads. Definitely better options when it comes to skill champs, but I'm, I'm into them right now. You know, I want to get better with them. I want to get his timing and spacing down. Um, so yeah, I don't know how many people are going to watch that, if anyone, because I know that most people do not like the Daredevil Hell's Kitchen, and I get it. I was there. I really do understand. Um, but I mean, I think the guy's got a lot of value now. And I've come around on him. 
He's fun, you know? Low block, yep. Don't let him do that stupid special too. Let's get him below two bars. There it is. Oh, garbage truck hands. Get that true damage, that's fun. Fun. There it is. Playing right into that parry. Making it too easy. And then a level one should end it here. Man, look at that. Full yellow bar finish. You guys stuck through it. Man, I appreciate it. Um, you know, we'll see you in the next video. Get to see my 100% here. Yay. Uh, yeah, you know, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.